This is the 1150 fuel pump replacement kit from Euro Moto Electrics. It contains a new filter, a pump, the special U-shaped hose, a vibration isolator for the bottom of the pump, the particulate screen, and a section of high pressure hose that can be cut up for connecting the filter and the pump to the plate. Now the fuel pump has a little protective cover on the bottom that pops right off and then the vibration isolator slides right over like that and then the particulate screen snaps on the bottom of the fuel pump. On the other end, on the outlet of the pump, is a little protective cap that pops off. And then the two electrical terminals, the plus for the green wire and the minus for the brown wire or ground wire. The filter is marked with in on one end, but to make sure I don't mess it up when I install it, I drew an arrow from the in to the out which is very much like the arrow on the existing filter. It also comes with these clamps which you can reuse. These are special. They're designed specifically for high pressure fuel systems and they are not like the ones you get at the auto parts store for a hose clamp with the little worm gear. These don't have the worm gear. If you use the cheap auto parts clamps, you're going to have a failure. That's a bad thing. Don't even go there. Second, these are made out of stainless. That's very important because water does get in the fuel, particularly with ethanol, which loves water, and you do not want these to rust. Rather than worry about all the details, the kit's got it all ready to go for my installation. I thought it might be easier to show how you take the tank off with the tank already off. These are the quick disconnects for the fuel lines and there's a little button on each of the female that if you press it then you'll be able to slide them apart and you'll usually hear a little click uh, that tells you they've parted company. Same thing when you put them back together you'll hear a little click. The other connection is the electrical connection. This is all the wires that go to the fuel pump and to the fuel level indicator. That slides in this way and there's two little ears here that you press to pull that out and that's the piece that's on the gas tank. Then the other is the bolt here which holds the tank onto the frame. The thing to remember is that there's a loose nut back here uh, and it'll fall down into the frame if you're not careful. So people will put a magnet on there when they undo the bolt or they'll use one of those magnetic finger gloves for the mechanics to hold steel bolts and washers. The only other thing then holding the tank are these uh, tabs or knobs here they fit into the ears in the tank, so that holds the front of it onto the frame. And that's all there is to uh, mounting the tank. I've drained a lot of the fuel out of the tank, but there's probably a little still in it. But it should be okay to take the uh, cover off with the fuel filter and the fuel pump. I put everything on, uh, put the tank on a uh, blanket to protect the paint and as I pulled it off I noticed somebody's been in before to replace the filter because they put an index mark to make sure when they put the plate back in the orientation's correct. That's very important because the float which is how the fuel indicator works has to be in the right orientation inside the tank to give the proper reading. These two lines are the pressurized fuel. One is output, one is back to the tank. And you'll notice that 
one has the male and one has the female connector. So I'll make sure if I remove these that I get the right connector back on the line. But I don't think I'm going to be replacing these. These are looking really good. These are the two vent lines. And when I disconnected them from the bike, I left the stinger on this one and I left the other stinger in the bike. And you'll notice that somebody has been here before with the yellow mark. Um, that actually matches up with the yellow uh, bumper here on the spigot. And I want to make sure if I replace these that I make sure the lines are the right ones. I don't want to switch which ones these are. I remove the six locking nuts that hold the plate to the side of the tank and then I've uh, pulled the plate up part way but not completely because I don't want to bend the lever on the float and I need to get these two lines off the plate to get the plate out. They go up to the filler neck so they're part of the vent system and it's important to keep them in the right place so this one I marked with a little white paint mark and I put a little white paint mark up on the plate so I can get it back on. Um, the thing too is that these have a use once clamp and you need to break that off to get the lines to slide. So what I found worked very nicely is I have a set of side cutters and I put them over the use once clamp tightened it up and bent it and it snapped it and then I could slide it open a little more with these pliers so I'm ready to remove the lines now I've pulled the lines off the spigots and I took some green garden wire and wrapped it around them and then tied it off on the tank to keep them from falling back inside uh, it's a pain to have to fish them back out and if they should happen to fall back, I've got a line to pull them out with. Now, to pull the plate and the assembly out, I want to be careful because the float arm, which is over here, I don't want to bend that. So I have to kind of jockey things around a little bit, and then it comes out. And there's a certain amount of fuel still in everything. So... The way this is set up is this is the float and the float arm. This is the fuel filter. This is the fuel pump. This is a sediment filter on the inlet to the pump. And if you look here, you'll see there's an arrow on the fuel filter, which is the direction of the fuel flow. So the inlets on this side and the outlets on that side I've marked the new filter with an outside arrow uh, because that filter showed inlet up here on the top and I sure don't want to get that flipped around. So that's basically what's there. Now you'll notice there's a big o-ring also to seal the plate to the tank. So I'm going to end up with a new one of these uh, when I put it all back together as well. I want to show some of the details of the assembly that's inside the tank. This is the float and the float arm. And the float arm has a pivot. So as the fuel level changes, the float arm rotates on that pivot. If you look closely in here, you'll see that there's a, a wire resistor. It's called a potentiometer. And the float arm moves around that potentiometer changing its resistance and it's that which indicates the change in fuel level. You'll also notice that on this end it's gotten dark and then on this end over here it's not so dark. That's just carbon that's kind of arced in there. I'm going to take a pencil eraser and clean that up. The other thing to notice is that this is the fuel filter this is the stock used once connector, but this is a stainless steel 
connector specifically designed for high pressure fuel systems and whoever has been in to replace the filter went ahead and used these which is what I'm going to do when I replace the filter and the lines. This is the fuel pump and you'll see these still have the original crimp on connectors so I don't think the pumps ever been replaced. This bike has almost 72,000 miles on it and we're replacing the pump as a precaution. They do fail. Don't ask me how I know. Down here are some electrical connections that bring power to the pump. This wire is the green wire and this wire is brown. So this is the plus which is power in and this is the minus which is the ground. And my new pump has markings on it for plus and minus so I'll be sure to get those connected correctly uh, to the proper posts on the pump when I reinstall it. The uh, filter bag and it has a little carrier that clamps on the bottom of the fuel filter. Um, that all is going to get replaced with the fuel pump. Now that I've removed the old filter, I'm ready to put on the new one. And I cut a piece of the uh, pipe that we uh, hose that we were given in the kit to the same length as the old hose I took off the fuel filter and then this hose is the uh, hose that was the special U-shaped hose in the kit. Um, the thing to be careful again is the direction of the filter. The arrow is the direction of fuel flow. This end is labeled in and you can be sure, or I should say you can double check yourself, this is the outlet of the fuel pump and it runs through this pipe and goes over to here where it goes into the fuel filter. So this is the inlet of the fuel filter and the arrow goes that way. So that's a double check on yourself. So assembly is fairly simple. You slide the hose onto this end and then you slide the other hose onto this end. But what I found is uh, easier is to make sure you've got this um, clip on, sorry, the uh, clamp on here and then slide that on. Then just make sure you've got the rest of your clamps on before you connect everything. Now I found that in putting this together, if you put the hose on here and then on to here like that, if you just push from here, the whole assembly will slide right on without any trouble. And then the last thing is to tighten up the clamps. I use the seven millimeter socket on a little stubby ratchet to do that. I got the old fuel pump off by bending out and removing the use once only clamps, but I had a hard time getting the pump out of the holder and I found finally that if I pulled the old hose around this elbow on the pipe, I could get it enough clearance to get the pump off the remaining piece of hose, but I actually had to bend it a little bit. That made me nervous because this is plastic and I don't want to put a lot of stress on that when I assemble it. I measured the old hose and it's 40 millimeters long, so I did a test cut I took five millimeters off the hose and I could slide it so that just got past the beginning of the pipe. Now that means I can put the new hose on and I can push it all the way down the pipe around the elbow to get the pump in. So the question is why was that so hard? And the answer is 
when you look at the end and you put the vibration damper on the pump bottom, you'll see that the vibration damper has a special shape and that shape matches up with the bracket. So that keeps the pump in the right orientation and you can get it to go in. But notice that when you do that, the end of the pump and the end of the pipe actually touch. There's no gap and that's why it was so hard to get it off because you don't have any way to really bend this very much. So my solution, as I said, was to cut the new hose about five millimeters shorter and that's going to be okay because it's going to extend past the, the uh, raised ridge on the pipe and the raised ridge on the filter and the two clamps will go out here and that should be fine. So that's, that's how I'm going to do it. The other thing is that in removing the electrical wires, the uh, green is a seven millimeter nut and the ground or brown is an eight millimeter nut. Uh, I wanted to remove them before I took the pump out, but all I could get to was the green wire and I could get that off, but I couldn't get any way to back the nut off on the brown wire. So I actually had to leave it on while I pulled the pump out. Um, however, when I put it back together, I'm going to connect both the lines, well, both the wires to the terminals and then slide it into the bracket and uh, put it back together that way. So I'm ready to install the pump and I've got my clamps on over down here on the pipe and I pushed my hose far enough so that it's flush with this end of the pipe. I've also gone ahead and attached the wires. This is the plus terminal so it's got the green wire and that's the seven millimeter nut and then this over here is the brown wire which is negative and that has the eight millimeter nut. Now I've got the uh, vibration damping cover on the bottom and I just slide it into the bracket. There we go and I can push on it just a little bit and the pump nipple slides right up and matches up with the pipe and then I should be able with a little bit of luck to push the hose back down like that so that it's uh, tight and then I'll just need to tighten up my clamps and we'll have the pump installed. So the fuel pump is installed now. Um, I've got the hose clamps on and I found in getting the hose to go around the elbow a little spritz of WD-40 inside the hose made it a little bit easier to slide around the elbow and then back onto the in outlet uh, to the fuel pump. The uh, gap is about that big on the clamps. That felt nice and tight and I sure don't want to break the plastic outlet on the fuel pump. So I kept them about the same and same way on the uh, clamps that are holding the filter. So they're all on and they should not come loose under fuel pressure. The last piece I put on was the particle screen and that was uh, a little hard. It fits over the inlet to the fuel pump and then the vibration damper rubber uh, here uh, goes on the outside of that metal uh, circle on the particle filter. It's a little hard to get that to go in, but I found that if I took my small screwdriver, I could pull a little bit on the vibration damper rubber to open the gap just a little bit and then it slid in. I did have to push that on fairly hard and while you're doing that, just be careful you don't go and bend your float rod. You don't want to do that. So if you put a lot of force on this, just be careful to hang on to it while you push on the particle screen. So at this point, it's ready for installation into the gas tank.
I put a new o-ring on the tank and I used about three little dabs of super glue just to hold it. I don't want it to roll up or deform when I put the plate back on. And then I carefully inserted this whole assembly back into the gas tank, uh, being careful not to bend that float rod. I'm using the stock Use Once BMW clamps, and I have the uh, clamping tool that uh, you use to put those on, and it essentially grabs the uh, loop, and then you squeeze and close, and it crimps it. So I'm going to put these on now. That's one. And of course the uh, clamp rotates and tries to avoid its inevitable fate. And then we'll put this on another one. A little bit fiddly, but once you get it on, it, it stays on the clamp. But the clamp's riding up to the top of the hose. All right, let's try this again. See if I can get it on there. Okay, I think I have it this time. And squeeze closed. Okay, so the vent lines are clamped on. And I can remove my safety net here to keep them from disappearing inside the gas tank. And I'm ready to basically align this plate with the marks I made. And of course, it fights you until you get it to kind of slide around a little bit. And then when I've got my marks lined up, I just uh, run my lock nuts back down and the tanks all back together. One thing to note about the design of the top plate is there's a flat edge here which actually aligns with the marks somebody made, but that flat edge points right at the bracket for mounting the tank on the frame. So this is a telltale that says align it with this and you've got the plate in the right orientation for the float arm to work properly and indicate the proper fuel depth.